Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. See the stage from here, all right? Oh, this will be fine. I'll be upstairs, then. Yeah. All right, Mr. Kramer. Oh, good night. Your name's Klein, isn't it? That's right. You know, when he came out the house tonight to pick me up, he was so nice. I can't think of him as a police officer somehow. I... Oh, oh dear, that wasn't the proper thing to say, was it? Well, surely. Don't worry about it. We've had two other cases like yours this week, Mrs. Kramer. At least something like yours. The other two women just had the phone call, though. Well, they were lucky. Wish that's all I had. You're the only one who's actually seen him. I'll know him again if I see him, too. I'll tell you that much right now. Oh. What? Why, that's the officer I met before, isn't it? Yes, uh, that's Sergeant Carter. Oh, yes, Sergeant Carter. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off the number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned of the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Come on, boys, over to the end of the stage. Spread out and stand facing the screen. Hands at your sides, look straight ahead. A long way to the back of the room out there, and we want everybody to hear, so talk right up when you answer the question. Okay, number one, Salvatore Ampio, robbery. How tall are you, Salvatore? Uh, five, two and a half. And stand right up there in the circle. boy. What's your address? 2063 Franklin Avenue. What is that, an apartment house, hotel, what? I board in a room there. It's a boarding house, I guess. This city your home, Salvatore? Uh, I, I, I didn't get that. What did you say? You come from someplace else, or is this your hometown? No, 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 no. I'm from Philly. My wife lives there. What are you doing here? Oh, just uh, looking around. For work? Sure, sure, I, I work. What do you do, Salvatore? Greenhouse man, I... Trim free sometimes. Good money this time of the year. <laughs> Were there any weapons? Yeah. A gun. Well, what kind of gun? Tell me about it. You hear me? It's a Luger. I don't know what caliber it is. Sure good gun, though. You have a car? No, I have to... Okay, okay. Number two, Maxwell Stern. Grand Theft Auto. I didn't steal no Hudson. Have me here's a mistake. Well, when we find out that's true, we'll be the first to admit it, Max. Tell us the last place you slept before you were arrested. 4425 Lafayette Street. Uh, louder, Max. People can't hear you. 4425 Lafayette Street. All right, all right. How long you lived at that address? Well, what do you mean, how long have I lived there? How long have you lived there? That's what I mean. Well, I don't see what difference it makes. Just if I answer live... it, Max. Two hours. <laughs> Where'd you live before that? Norman, Oklahoma. How long in town before you were arrested? Two hours and a half. I didn't even get a chance to unpack my suitcase. Well, we unpacked it for you, Max. Some pretty interesting stuff there. Yeah, but I ain't done nothing. Okay, Max, that's enough. Slide on down. Yeah, I don't know what you found in my suitcase. Later, Max. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea Move. about me. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, don't get salty, Carl. Number two, William... I mean, number three, William Barnes. Open chart. In the circle, William. Light hurts my eyes. Well, then close them and give us your address. 
1256 West Colfax Avenue. That's the last place you slept yeah, before you were arrested? I don't no. know what you're trying to uh, do. That's the one we want, William. Yeah, we're well, two and two. 38 Reese, yeah. Department 10. Well, I don't Going know. To uh, I just don't a minute. Max. Yeah, uh, yeah, Sergeant. Stand against the wall there and keep your mouth shut. I don't want any talking up in that stage. Well, I was just telling Charlie here. Yeah, Charlie's I got didn't... his own troubles. Just do as I tell you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. What about a car, William? Did you have one? Yeah. A make, model, color, and year. It's a Plymouth convertible, a, a red one. 1947, I think. You think? Don't you know? I only swiped it yesterday. <laughs> Where do you work? Mount St. Joseph's. What's that? In cemetery. I dig graves. That's your profession, William? Yeah. I've been doing it a oh, long time. Were you arrested with anybody, William? Yeah. Louis was with me. Louis Barnes? Yeah. Any relation to you? Sure. He's my kid. Oh, I was just looking for you, Ben. Does this Kramer spot anybody? No luck. Yeah, these came up from the stats office. R and I have some other things. M.O. is about the same on all of them. Mm. Guy calls up, won't give his name, asks the girl to meet him, uses a lot of vile language, threatens him. Descriptions aren't too close. No, it's pretty dark. She could be wrong. You find out Mrs. Desmond's maiden name? Yeah, Rachel Ballinger. I checked it with Ruth Fork. They never heard of each other. Neither one of them knows it's Kramer. Mm. Mrs. Desmond worked out of the apprentice agency on 16th Street, and Ruth Fork is handled by an outfit called the Fairview. He sure likes models. You know, who doesn't? Yeah. Well, this bird's having a lot of fun, and we aren't even close to him yet. Better cover all the agencies that handle these girls and tell them what's up. Right. Oh, uh, I'll take those. Hmm? Oh. Sure. We'll have Mrs. Kramer look at him anyhow. Is she still here? In my office. When Pete comes up, shoo him up. Yeah. I don't, Doug. I... Oh, How long is it going to be, Lieutenant? Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes, darling. Oh, yes. Downstairs. Bye. Hope you don't mind me using your phone. No, not at all. Hi. Oh, hi, Pete. Remember Mrs. Kramer? Oh, sure do. How are you? Hello, Sergeant. I uh, remembered where I saw that picture. Oh? Calendar, year before last. Oh. I knew I'd seen you before the other day. Well, I'll do. Still working at that? I mean, posing for Calendar? Well, I'm still a photographer's model when I get a call. I uh, played those voice recordings back from Mrs. Kramer, Pete. She didn't recognize any of them. Oh, I wish I could be more help. I know I'd recognize his voice again, the same as I recognize his face. Oh, what an awful person. Just awful. Well, we're glad he didn't do any worse than he did. Oh, I guess I screamed so much and made so much noise, he was afraid he'd be caught right there. I've been modeling off and on ever since I was 16, and Lord knows I've had my share of wolf calls and cranks and smart boys. But when I got that phone call, I thought it was just another one. Although the language he used was pretty raw. Mm. Well, tell me, Miss Kramer, uh, have you thought of any possible way he could have gotten your phone number? I just don't know. I, I really don't. The agency wouldn't give it out. They're very strict about things like that. They have to be. Yes, yeah, you. Sure. I can still hear him saying, you're a pretty good-looking girl, aren't you? And that seems to be his opening remark every time. He said the same thing to the other two. And did he have that awful music playing in the background? Yeah, right down the line. Try to make a date with them. When they refused, he told them they'd be sorry. But he didn't make his threat good with either one of them. And why do you suppose he went after you, Mrs. Kramer? Well, I guess I was pretty rude to him on the phone. Not that he didn't deserve it after the kind of language he used. It's the only explanation I can think of. Hmm. He uh, just walked up to you when you were getting into your car in the parking lot. You hadn't seen him in the store that day at all? I never saw him before in my life, I'm sure. When he talked, I knew he was the same man who'd called me on the phone the night before and asked me to go out with him. Well, what did he say? He said, uh, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? And then he said, I'll teach you. And then he started hitting me around. Did you try to hit him back? Oh, well, I tried to get out of his way. I'm pretty tall, but he's quite a bit taller. He's over six feet, you know. Oh, may I borrow a cigarette? I'm out. Oh, sure. Well, thanks. Oh, thank you. Sure. Now, it's possible, but a little out of line in a case like this, to think that 
You've never met or seen him before anywhere. I'm almost positive. I can't say for sure because I meet so many people all the time. But his face was entirely unfamiliar to me, and his voice, too, of course. Tall, dark, thin, about 160. Oh, and very nicely dressed. Kind of conservative. Mm. You've been married how long, Mrs. Kramer? Uh, uh, about four years this July. Mm-hmm. And what does Mr. Kramer do? Well, Doug travels for consolidated engineers. He's an engineer? Oh, no. He's an attorney. I have to ask a personal question here, Mrs. Kramer. Understand it's uh, strictly to get an idea about this thing, and I'd appreciate an answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, since you've been married, have you gone out with men other than your husband? I mean, in a, in a business way or something like that. Why do you ask me a question like that? I'm well, just trying to pin down the reason this man called you and asked you to go out. and was apparently so incensed when you refused him that he attacked you in the parking lot. Is there an ashtray? Oh. Yeah. The others are married, aren't they? Mrs. Desmond's been divorced for three years. Ruth Forbes is single, works as an airline hostess now. Understand, uh, we don't want to pry into your well, personal life. Well, Doug knows when I go out with someone else. He knows it's sometimes necessary when a buyer comes into town. Mm, I see. Well, thank you for answering. Uh, have you ever seen this man? No. How about this one? No. No, I, I don't think so. Well, then take your time. No. Well, I I just don't know. If, if he had a hat on, I... No, I, I guess not. But you aren't sure. Well, no, I, I guess I'm not. Okay. How about this man? No, definitely no. Okay. Uh, Pete, uh, let's pick up this one and see what he has to say, huh? Yeah. Oh, what is it, Quine? Uh, Mr. Kramer's downstairs. Oh. Well, that's about all, Mrs. Kramer. We may want to talk to you again in case we come up with something. Oh, well, I had my phone number changed. It's uh, 40239 now. Mm-hmm. Same exchange? Yes, Tabor. Uh-huh. Tabor... 40239. Okay, if you don't mind, we're going to put a man with you and your family for the next few days to keep an eye on things till we get this cleared up. Oh. Well, we hardly think he'll come back and try to get at you again, but uh, we don't want to take any chances either. And we don't want you to be frightened by any policemen you see loitering about. I see. Well, goodbye then. Oh, I sure hope you get him. Well, so do we. Thanks for all your trouble. Goodbye, Mr. Kramer. Morning, Pete. Anything new? No routine. Bench warrant out for this Carsterson, failing to register. Got him yet? Asher picked him up this morning. Carsterson claims he's been out of town. Just got back last night. Check it out. So far, it stands. Let's hold him today. Want a sandwich? Yeah. Oh, what did Freed have to say? Oh, Freed's on vacation. I talked to Dr. Rourke. Mm. He says the guy's following a pretty clear pattern. Sure. He only picks on models or girls who've had their picture in the paper. Been seen in public... Hey, that one we had two years ago did practically the same thing. He had a yen for telephone operator. Yeah. Mrs. Desmond, Mrs. Kramer, and Ruth Forbes reported the calls. Mrs. Kramer didn't report hers until after she'd been beaten up. The language he uses when he talks to them. Well, some women just wouldn't be bothered reporting it at all. They might tell their boyfriends or husbands, but that's about it. Yeah, no telling how many he's called. Yeah, I guess so. This is a different operation. How's that been? Rook thinks this bird's building up to something. Might kill the next girl if he has a chance. Charlie. Oh, yeah, he's just coming in. Uh, Lieutenant? Yeah? Your office. Okay. You got three? The uh, client, Ben. Better hold it up. Just got another complaint. A model? No, her name's Adelaide Harvey, a receptionist at Universal Television Station. She played it smart and it looks hot. How's that? She made a date to meet him tonight. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint gum. Chew Wrigley Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. 
The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime. And the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup. Police, Miss Harvey. My name's Guthrie. This is Sergeant Cog. How do you do? How do you do? Scare you, did he? Well, not so much when I was talking to him on the phone, but now, after I've had a chance to think it over, gosh, the officers who came up and told me what he did to that other woman, did he hear the dad? Oh, she'd be all right. We'd just like to get a few things straight, Miss Harvey. Oh, sure. The terrible, terrible things he said to me. I told the officers everything I could remember. Yeah, we have their report, Miss Harvey. Uh, I just want to follow up on it a little. Uh, we'd like to get this, Byrne. And anything you can say or tell us about him is going to help us. I'm still a little shaky, I guess. It might seem funny to you. No, not at all. I mean, I know he can't hurt me talking on the phone, but... Well, I don't know. Well, tell me, do you think you'd be able to recognize his voice again if you heard it? Well, I think I would. I don't know. It's sort of odd, you know. Mm-hmm. When the call came in, at first I thought it was one of the boys downstairs kidding me or something. You know, he talked nice at first. When I asked him who it was, he wouldn't say. He just sort of brushed me off and said he'd see me around and that he'd like to take me out. I said I'd have to know who he was. We talked, you know. Did he mention any names of people that you might know? Oh, no, I knew it wasn't anyone. I mean, one of the boys downstairs or something when he started to insist on seeing me tonight. That's when I remembered reading about the other phone calls in the paper. Mm -hmm. So I told him I'd see him. He'd almost made me sick, the things he was saying and all. Yeah, uh, there was uh, music in the background? Yeah, weird things. What kind of a but man you could would hear him plainly? Not all the time. Music was sort of echoey and scratchy. And then I got the idea he might be holding a handkerchief up over the mouthpiece. Does that sound possible? Oh, sure, sure. And the call came in about four... Excuse me, please. Sure. Second floor reception. Yes, this is Adele. Oh, just a moment. On two, Janie. Right. The uh, call came in about four? Yes, I'd just come back from having a Coke. Where do you get your Cokes? There's a machine at the end of the hall. Anybody around the machine when you were there? I don't remember. I don't think so. The lobby of the Ellsworth, uh, that's where he said he'd meet you? Yes, seven o'clock. I told him I'd be there. Well, you did the right thing. Maybe we can get our hands on him. Yeah, I hope so. There ought to be a law against a man calling up like that. There is. Um, did you ever model, Miss Harvey? No. Photographic work, something like that? No. Wait. I'm not a professional, but the station used my picture for publicity last week. This TV on the billboard out front? Yeah, that's me. This is Sergeant Quine. Sergeant Quine will be sitting in that chair. Next to the palm? Yeah, and I'll be in the chair right in back of you. I don't know. Anybody who comes up to you, we'll pick up. Well, I suppose I have to go through with it now. It's... All right, Gosh. Quine. You can go ahead. And see you think he'll show up? Well, we hope he will. You can go over and sit down now, if you like. Well, all right. Here goes nothing. Be over in a couple of minutes. Okay. Hi. How's it look? Two couples at the bar, another couple in one of the booths. Man sitting at the end of the bar doesn't answer the description. Mm -hmm. How about the dining room? It's filled. Crockett's at the entrance with Murph. Okay, keep your eyes open. Yeah. Hey. What? Uh, let me your paper. Huh? Oh, sure. Thanks. It's after seven. Guess I better get over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, 
Nurse Guthrie. Yeah? There's a man looking at me. Hmm? He's been glancing at me ever since I sat down here. Well, where is he? He's standing over by the desk now. The tall one in the gray suit. Oh, yeah. You see him? Yeah. Doesn't he look suspicious to you? Yeah, he sure does. That's Sergeant Asher. Oh. like we struck out. Yeah, he'd be here by now if he's going to be here. You think? Maybe he got scared. This kind usually do, don't they? They say. Okay, Miss Harvey. I guess he didn't want to see me too bad at that, huh? <laughs> yeah. All through for the night? Mm-hmm. Sergeant Quine will take you home. Quine, I'll send someone out later. Okay. You ready, miss? I'm tired. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, then? Uh, hold it. Pete signaling. Oh, yeah. Ben. Black Buick seat in that 41 circle the block three times. Man driving. Uh, plenty of parking space out front? Yeah. Guy looks possible. Know anybody who owns a car like that? Buick seat in that? 41. I don't know. Oh, come on. Should be coming around. Now let's take a chance outside. Yeah. Oh, at the corner, Ben. You just caught the light. 41978? Yeah. All right, Miss Holly. You see the car? Yeah, I see it. Take a good look when he comes by. I'm scared. Well, nothing to be scared of. Here he comes. You see his face? Yes. Well, anything familiar about the car, about his face? I'm trying to think. There is something. I... I'm not sure. He was wearing overalls and he was driving a truck, but it could have been him. You've seen that man before? Yes, I think it's the same man who came out to fix my television set. I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting. I got a job there. Ask it out for a close tonight. I'm well, pretty busy, are you? Yeah, yeah, more I can handle. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Your name Victor Knight? Yeah, sure. We're police officers, Victor. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, well, sure. What's up, officer? Do you service a television set for a girl named Adelaide Harvey, the 13th of last month? Oh, Harvey. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look in the books. Uh, I might have, though. Why? What's up? Does the name Forbes mean anything to you? Ruth Forbes? Forbes. Mm, no, no, I don't think so. How about Rachel Kramer? No. Lives out on South York Street? No, no. I, I don't get it. What All do you three guys of these people say you service their television sets at one time or another. Is that true? Well, could be. I, I don't know. Why? Is it anything wrong with that? I, I got a license to be in business, you know. You drive a 41 Buick Citinet, don't you? Well, sure. It's parked out in back. Hey, hey, look, I don't understand. You must have something wrong coming in here and asking. Oh, well, just a second, will you? Victor Lecter. Oh, hello, honey. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't think it'll be too late. Uh, hi, hi, honey, I got some people waiting. I'll call you back. Yeah, yeah, bye. Um... I remember now, I did service a set for some people who lived out on South York. It must have been last year sometime. It was the 10th of February, Victor. Oh? Where were you last night, Victor? Where was I? I was home. All night? Yeah, why? Can you prove it? My wife, she'll tell you I was there. Last night, we saw you driving your car near the Ellsworth Hotel. Did you forget? Oh. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, I went out for some cigarettes, I guess. You live at 3567 Civic Place, don't you? Yeah. You drove clear over by the Ellsworth to get cigarettes? Well, lots Victor, of... did you drive over there to meet Adelaide Harvey? I don't know anybody named Adelaide Harvey. We just told you. She works at a television station. You serviced her TV set on the 13th of last month. Look, I'm married. Why would I want to meet some other girl? That's what we're trying to find out, Victor. Didn't you call her up yesterday afternoon and ask her to meet you there? 
Victor. Do you remember where you were three nights ago? Uh, Sunday night? Monday night. I was home. Look, I tell you, I haven't done anything. Anybody work with you here? I'm all alone this week. My help's on vacation. Can you get someone to stand in? Well, no, I... Oh, now, look, I, I got a lot of work to get out. I don't know what I'm you guys want, I'm afraid you'll have want, to but... close the store and come on downtown with us, Victor. Well, now, wait, I... I never heard of such a thing. I haven't done anything. I've never been in any trouble. We just want to get something straightened out. Well, I won't go. We have a warrant, Victor. I, I tell you, I haven't done anything. You can ask my wife. We'll now, ask look... her if it's necessary. Right now, we'd just like to have you come downtown with us. There's a lady going to be there. Mrs. Kramer. A man beat her up in a parking lot last Monday night. Well, I, I tell Broke you... a couple of her ribs. You sound like you could be that man. I, I'm not, I tell you. You got this all wrong. If Mrs. Kramer says you aren't the man, you'll be back here in half an hour, Victor. My what? She'll leave me when she finds out. She'll walk right out of me. I know Dora. She'll walk right on me and leave me flat. She won't even help me. She'll walk right on me. We've been married nine years. Did you think about that when you made the phone call? No. no. I, I guess I didn't think there was any way you, you could catch me. Well, you should have thought of that. <laughs> Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The lineup. For before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Cogger, was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Hi Everback, Joyce Manners, Jay Novello, Howard McNear, Joe Duval, Virginia Gregg, and Stacey Harris. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> This is the CBS Radio Network.